Hey, I'm in Haya. Chapter 9 Integration. Exercise 9 are the mixed questions at the end. Number 11, a former higher question. Another worded one. This time you need to look at the words. It's not just case the picture because it gives extra information on it. Because the equations of the curves and the lines are all in here. It says that you've got a parabola with the equation, and here's the equation here. Y equals a quarter x squared lies between the lines and that line is y equals 9 so it intersects at 9 and that's y equals 1 so it intersects at 1 it says x goes from negative 6 to 6 so we're just assuming that they cross there maybe I'll check that find the area of the cross section and the volume now for a volume we need a length and it tells you that at the beginning 60 meters long so all those words mattered in this case what's the volume of this prism then hey, well, first step just check these numbers I'll check the numbers for these intersections. So what about these intersections? Intersections. Right, what have I got? I've got y equals 9, so I should have a quarter x squared equals 9. So x squared is 36, so x is plus or minus 6, so they indeed, indeed cross at that. And I've got a quarter x squared equals 1. So x squared equals 4, so x equals the square root of that, plus or minus 2. So they're actually crossing at negative 2 and 2. Now, the next part of this, what's the best way to find that area in here, that cross-sectional area? Now, the diagram has included these dotted lines, which seems to guide you into the fact of considering a rectangle and then an extra part at the end. But you don't need to do that. There's two ways of arriving at this. Well, the first thing is it's symmetrical. I'm only going to consider one half of it and then double the answer. So the two possibilities would be this. Either I'm going to think of it as that rectangle here, plus this portion at the side, so either I've got those two areas which I'll add together and then double to get the cross-sectional area, or I can consider it as the whole half parabola minus that little bit of the parabola at the bottom. I've got those possibilities. Now that one's straightforward because the distance between them is 8, and if that's 2, that's 2. So that area is 8 by 2, which is 16. But this area, that area would have to be given by well, this area goes from 2 to 6, where the top curve for these area elements is 9, y equals 9, and the bottom curve is given by a quarter x squared. And then add these two answers together. Or, if I want to consider it as the big area, the big half parabola, that area there, call that area 1, area 2 this time, Area 1 would be the integral from 0 to 6 of the top, which is 9, minus the bottom, which is a quarter x squared, dx. And area 2, this little bit at the bottom that I don't want, which would be from 0 just to 2, those two lines intersect, it's, well it goes from 0 to intersection 2, of the top, which is y equals 1, minus the bottom, a quarter x squared dx and then I would do area 1 and take away area 2 so it's just a case of which one would you use well in fact they're both the same when you evaluate this I'm going to have to do this exact same calculation I'm going to have to do that calculation worked out at 6 that calculation once it's integrated worked out at 2 and subtract them and then add on a 16 whereas here I'm going to have to do that calculation worked out at 6 but minus nothing and that calculation just worked out to 2 well, it's a 1, not a 9. So it's actually slightly less involved doing it this way as the big take away the small. But I think I'll do it this way because it seems to be implied that they're looking for that by those dotted lines. Right, so I'm going to go for that first one. I'll work at this area first of all. So that area is going to be, integrate that, I'll write it down again, 2 to 6 of 9 minus a quarter x squared dx being the top take away the bottom for this section here. Top curve, take away bottom curve, so I've got positive area elements. Constant term will go back up to the linear. That will go up to cubed, so now it means it's over 12, unfortunately. Work it out at 6, work it out at 2. So it's 9 times 6, minus a twelfth of 6 cubed, minus 9 times 2, minus a twelfth of 2 cubed, that's that part down now, it's just lots of arithmetic. So I've got 54 minus, well, 
The 12's got a 2 and a 6 in it. The 6 will look at one of the 6's, the 36, so I'll be an 18. That's also an 18. Then that's 8 upon 12. 8 upon 12 is 2 thirds, so it's getting closer. So I've got 54, take away 18, take away 18. Well, that's 3 18, so that leaves an 18. Plus 2 thirds, so that's 18 and 2 thirds. Not units, I know it's cubic metres in this case. So that area there, maybe I'll give them names, I'll call that area 1, area 2 in this case. So I'm calling that area 2. I should have said here at the same time. Area 1 is just going to be length times breadth. It's just going to be 2 times 8, which is 16 square metres. So the total area is going to be 2 lots of this, 2 lots of A1 and A2. Two lots of 16 and 18. Two lots of 16 and 18 and two thirds. That's two lots of 34 and two thirds. That would be 68 and four thirds, 69 and one third. 69 and a third square metres. Whoops. That's that really well. Square metres. The question said, what's the volume? This is going to make a prism. The question said that this had length 60 metres. The cross-sectional area is 69 and a third. And the whole thing makes a prism of length 60. That's the shape of the whole thing, where this is 60 metres. So it's going to be 69 and a third times 60. Well, that's almost 70. If it was 70, it'd be 4,200. I'm just missing two-thirds of it there. Two-thirds of 60 is 40. So 4,000... 200 minus the 40, 4,160. This time it's metres cubed. Yeah, that's question 11.